In this video, I will be demonstrating the steps for threading the sewing machine. These instructions are for the Brother XL2600i, which is the machine model that we use most often in class. Other machines thread slightly differently, especially older machines. So if your machine has different instructions, they would be available in the machine manual, which could be found online if you don't have a copy. Newer machines like this one typically have some kind of guides or indicators or a little cheat sheet on the machine itself to help you thread it. And if you can't figure out how to thread the machine, I can help with that as well. The first step to threading the machine is to put the thread on the spool pin. So we'll start by doing that. And I'm using a brightly colored thread to hopefully make it easier to see because many of these places that you have to put the thread are small or uh, difficult to see. It's really important to thread the machine correctly. It doesn't seem like these little wire hooks and different loops would be very significant. It doesn't seem like the order should matter all that much or that it would make any difference if you miss one little step. But in fact, your machine won't sew correctly. It may jam. The threads may be loopy or come apart if you have not threaded the machine correctly. So it is a very important first step and you'll be doing that over and over regularly as we work on projects. So from the spool, the first place that we need to go is here. And there is a slot in this metal piece with a little wire behind it. And you can see it's on the same base as the bobbin winding tension disc, but we only use the tension disc when we're winding bobbins. And we only use this thread guide, which is what this part is called, when we are threading the machine. So this thread guide you can see is marked number one. And there is a little diagram here to remind you to do this the correct way. So the thread is going to come from the back through this slot. And if you can see, the thread is passing under this part of the metal piece. Once you have gone through that thread guide, you see the thread lines up perfectly with this channel in the machine. And if you can see, this is actually marked with a number two to remind us that this is the second step. So we've put the thread in this channel and we're just laying it in there. Now down here, there's a number three and a little arrow that looks similar to a U-turn symbol. And this is telling us we need to go up again with the thread looping under this part this plastic here, and we're going up again. Inside this channel, you can see your thread take up or the take up lever. And when you're turning your hand wheel, you can make this lever be visible or it may be less accessible. It may be down here and inside the machine further. So if you can't see the thread take up arm, turn your hand wheel. And remember, we only turn the hand wheel toward us always. Turn the hand wheel until this take up is visible. And then you will just lay your thread over the top of the take up, loop it to the left, and then pull it forward. You'll see that there's actually a little slot in the metal and as you pull the thread forward, it slides into that slot so that it's actually going through the bar now. Once you have threaded a take up, you can bring the thread back down. So you can see we're working right to left and we're going up and down in several different places. We started at the spool, we went to this thread guide, we came down through this channel and back up again. Inside here are the thread tension discs. They help to sort of pinch the thread and provide some tension so that the thread is not loopy or loose when you're sewing. This dial, as we've talked about when we talked about the parts of the machine, is the thread tension adjustment dial. And so turning this would make these plates push together more tightly or more loosely, which would affect the tension that's being put on the thread. You should generally leave this where it's set somewhere in the middle and not touch it unless there's a problem with the tension on your machine and then I can help you with that. Now that the thread is in the take up, we're going to bring it 
straight down. And the last few steps all involve the area here around the needle. At the top of the needle, you can see here this little metal hook. And that is another thread guide. So we're going to take the thread and loop it over and behind that hook and now you can see it's secured there and that's going to help keep it in place at the needle and the last step is to thread the eye of the needle itself it may help to lower the presser foot so that that's not in your way it may be necessary to raise or lower your needle slightly so you have better access to it you always thread the needle from front to back so you're going to push the thread through the eye from the front and pull the tail out the back. And this can be a little bit difficult because the eye is quite small and the angle can be awkward and it's difficult to see. You'll poke the thread through the eye of the needle and pull it through. So we want a decent little tail of thread here. We can put that under the presser foot and to the back of the machine and that's how we always want our thread before we start to sew. The last step is to put the bobbin into the bobbin case and bring up the bobbin thread and then we'll be ready to sew. So we're going to remove the cover from the bobbin housing and we'll take our bobbin that we've made previously and if you look here you'll see a little diagram indicating that you want to load the bobbin with the thread coming off at the top instead of at the bottom so this would be backward this is the correct way so we'll put the bobbin in we've got the thread coming out at the top if you look again you'll see that it's telling you to bring that thread down and put it into this little channel here where this arrow is so we're going to loop the thread into that channel and there's actually a little razor blade inside here so it is possible to cut the extra or it will cut off on its own and then we'll put the cover back in place and now we're going to take up this bobbin thread now ordinarily when you do this you would leave your presser foot on but it is a little bit difficult to see what's happening with the presser foot here or what you need to do so I'm going to remove it but I'm only removing it so that you can see more clearly, you would not remove it if you were doing this to actually sew. So you can see here on the throat plate, and these are those feed dogs that help to pull the fabric through the machine as you sew, but here, this little hole, this is the hole where the needle goes down through the throat plate every time that it stitches when you're sewing. And what's happening inside the machine is that underneath here, this top thread that you've threaded through your needle and this bobbin thread in the bottom are actually becoming looped together or interlocked and that's what holds the stitches when you sew with a sewing machine. We're going to hold the tail of the thread that's in the needle loosely. I don't have tension on it. It's just held loosely just so it can't go back through the eye and unthread. So you hold that loosely in your left hand. Then you turn the hand wheel toward you always. You're going to turn it until the needle goes down and up one time. So the needle's going down, I'm still turning the hand wheel toward me, and now the needle's back up. And you can see, if you watch what's happening through the bobbin window, and I'll take the cover off so you can see a little more clearly. When you do that, the thread actually loops around, see it coming through there, and it pulls that bobbin thread and loops with it, and now it's pulled it back up through the hole here. Again, you'd leave this housing cover on. You don't need to take that off. I did that so you can see what's happening. So the thread's gonna go down and loop around and bring up that bobbin thread. And so now we have this loop of it poking out. And so we're going to just pull that. And now we have one tail coming through the eye of the needle and one tail coming up through this hole from the bobbin and we would put both of these under the presser foot toward the back of the machine before we start to sew. So I'm going to do that one more time with the presser foot on so you can see what it would look like when you do it for yourselves. So I'm turning my hand wheel, my needle's going down and up, I'm pulling on the tail of the thread, bringing up the bobbin thread, putting both threads under my presser foot toward the back of the machine. Now I can test the machine to make sure I've done all of this correctly. And to do that, I'm just gonna take a scrap piece of fabric, I'm gonna put it under my presser foot, and I'm just gonna sew a straight line for 
a couple of inches so that I can check that the machine is threaded correctly. You need to test your machine every time that you re-thread. So if you have to refill your bobbin, if you have to change your thread color, if you run out of thread, no matter what, if you have just threaded your machine or put in a bobbin, you need to test your machine before you start sewing. If your stitches come out wrong, if your machine is not sewing effectively and you finish a whole seam and then realize that there's a problem with your threading, you have to redo it all. In addition, it may be something that's going to jam the machine and cause it to actually break or it may be something you have to spend time taking back out again and so none of these outcomes would be desirable ones. So this is why it's so important to test your machine before you start. You'll be able to tell if you've made any mistakes before you even get started. All I've done is a series of plain straight stitches. I did not back stitch. I just did everything straightforward. When you take thread out of the machine, if you can't pull it, if it's stuck, just wiggle your hand wheel gently back and forth a little bit until you can loosen the thread and get it free of the machine. Then you'll cut your excess thread and you'll look at what you sewed. And so what I can see here is that the top does have a few loose threads. So I'm gonna adjust my tension slightly and the bottom looks great. Everything looks pretty straight. I can see it's a little bit loose in places from those loops that are loose on top. So now that I've adjusted my tension, I can try again. and that's made a big difference. These are not as loopy anymore, much tighter on the back. 